I've got six brand new fragrances that I just got in the mail, and I'm ready to give you guys my first thoughts and impressions on them. So let's hop into it. Welcome back to another video, Max Forte here. If you do love to make a great first impression, smelling good is a great way to do. It's a great way to start. So we've got six fragrances here. I'm gonna start off with this one here from the house of Tummy Bahama. This is from their St. Bart's collection, which is supposed to be very tropical, very beachy, very vacation-like. This is St. Bart's uh, Seascape. Here's the box, blue and silver, nothing crazy, just very minimalist. These, these become very uh, quickly discounted, if you will. Love the bottle, it's got this frosty look with the uh, palm tree in the back. You know, St. Bart's Seascape, Tommy Bahama in silver, silver cap. It is plastic cap, again, nothing too crazy. It's not gonna be an expensive fragrance to begin with, and it's going to be discounted very soon, I'm sure. So looking at the bottle, looking at the juice, it's giving me a, you know, Dolce & Gabbana light blue, oh, fra uh, light blue oh, intense kind of a vibe. The scent itself is actually very nice. If you like, well, very nice in the sense that it's not gonna be anything groundbreaking or brand new. It's gonna be more of the same when it comes to your freshies, aquatic, oceanic, sweet, fruity grapefruit. Very much in the same vein or wheelhouse as your Paco Rabanne Invictus Aqua. Now, which company doesn't have a Paco Rabanne Invictus Aqua kind of a fragrance? So this, I would say, is going to be your Tommy Bahama, Saint, you know, Seascapes, St. Bart's collection, you know, take on that Paco Rabanne Invictus Aqua kind of a scent. Again, appealing, sweet, refreshing, oceanic. Definitely a beautiful grapefruit here that's very sweet and sharp up front. I like it, I really do. It's a good scent, it's not gonna be bad. Now the, 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 the breaking factor here, or the key factor I should say, is going to be the performance and if you can get this at a very good price, at a very good discounted price. Because I can see this being um, one very procured fragrance if it has the performance, just like your Nautica Voyages, you know, so on and so forth. But in the first impression, it smells good. Not bad, on scent alone, this is a good one. Performance, yet to be seen. Next up, we have a brand new one here from Mont Blanc. This is Mont Blanc Explorer Platinum. Now the Platinum here, I've heard good things about it. The box is going to be silver with an off-white, you know, uh, tag here in the middle. It says Explore Platinum. Nothing really crazy, you know, it looks nice. Comes with a, with a sleeve as well, um, with, the, uh, with the model. He's wearing a Mont Blanc watch. Who the hell knows? Anyway, this is going to be Platinum Explorer. Let's see how we like this. Now let's see what Platinum is going to be all about. The spares are nice. Now, the scent itself, wow, they did it again, guys. This is going to be, it's a very nice scent, very refreshing, but it has nuances, get this, of Centau 33 from Le Labo. So it's like, if you took Centau 33, this is what I'm getting here on the first impression, of course. I haven't worn this on skin, so I need to wear this to give you guys more. There's definitely a vetiver here along with a sandalwood in the base that's adding this creaminess, woodiness, facet to the fragrance. Nice, you know, blast of citruses up top. I'm getting like a Santal 33 vibe here for sure, uh, but in a more refreshing manner along with that vetiver. It's a nice scent. It's not a very original scent, but it's got some really cool nuances to this fragrance. I wanna really wear this on skin and perhaps come back here with a full review, give you guys my, my full thoughts. But on, on the blotter here and on the air here, it's actually a very good scent. And again, it's one of those fragrances that only gives you three notes. They only talk about a violet note up top, clary sage and cedar wood. But I definitely get a sandalwood. I definitely get a creamy vibe to the fragrance that it's green, a little bit uh, spicy. It smells good, it's very inviting. And again, I need to wear this on skin to give you guys my full thoughts. I do get a vetiver here as well, along with that cedar. It's a nice, it's very nice smelling. I think if you compare this with St. Bart that I talked about before, this is gonna be more you know, up my alley because it's a little bit more mature. They don't talk about lavender in a note breakdown, but I do get a little bit of a lavender along with that clary sage. This is good, definitely better than St. Bart just because this is going to be a little bit more sophisticated and mature, more, you know, modern meets mature, which, which I tend to like, you know, more than this. This is gonna be more playful, more easy to wear, uh, more youthful, so it all depends on your taste, but definitely worth checking out. I think, I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. If you thought the, the blue one that came before this one was too uninspiring, this is definitely a little better. Definitely going in the right direction. Good job, Mom Wong. Next up, we have a new one from Prada. This is going to be Ocean Luna Rosa Eau de Parfum. I actually did enjoy Ocean from last year, Prada Ocean. Uh, this is the new Eau de Parfum I'm gonna share with you right now. But the one from last year had this peppery grapefruit up top along with this caramel vetiver base, some iris in the heart. It was actually quite nice because the lavender was amazing with the iris. It was mature yet modern. 
it's what designers are doing right a lot a lot of that right now which is this adding this modern with classic you know elements so the original ocean by prado is actually really good let's see what we get of the eau de parfum here if they really change uh the composition itself or it's just you know a gimmicky release that's really not going to change much you know maybe it'll change a little bit on the performance itself but the scent itself is not going to vary very too much from the original i don't know I'm about to share with you right now let's see what we get out of this one spares are really nice and the scent is quite good it is a little different from that one I'm getting this rubbery, um, almost gourmand facet to the scent that's reminding me a little bit of um, Bulgari Black, which was like this wheel, this this, um, this rubbery wheel. I'm gonna pop it on screen here if you guys don't know that fragrance. It's been long discontinued. A little bit of nuances from Midnight in Paris from Van Cliff and Arpels, which is another fragrance that used to be a cheapie. Now it's a very, this is good guys. This has a lot of potential. Definitely has this leathery kind of a feel here. Definitely more mature. Uh, this is a good one. This is so far the best one of this haul. I like what Prada did here because this is, this could have been its own release. They could have released this as something completely different from the from the Luna Rosa collection, but I'm glad they didn't because because of the name itself, it's gonna get people curious to try. And when you do try, you're going to be blown away because the scent itself is actually really good. Again, it doesn't give you much notes to talk about. Ambroxan, woody notes, definitely vanilla. So it is going to be this rubbery, leathery vanilla, spicy, woody. This is great. Really liking this one. Definitely worth checking out. If you guys like the fragrances I'm talking about, Midnight in Paris from Van Cliff and Arpels, you know, you're gonna love this fragrance. If you never tried the fragrances I'm talking about that have been discontinued, it's also one that you should definitely try because it's different than anything out there in the designer's world, which is a good thing. Next up, I'm gonna give you one that was actually re-released. A lot of people don't know this. This is a 2023 release, of course. I'm talking about Rocas or Rochas in Tons, Rochas Men in Tons, which the bottle itself looks pretty funny. A lot of people like to make fun of this bottle. Uh, it is pretty peculiar and unique, but I have to be honest with you. This one here is the original Intense that I believe, if I'm not mistaken, was released originally in 1999 or early 2000. Don't quote me on that, I'd have to look back. But I've had this bottle for many years. The juice has gotten a lot darker. It used to be more of a pinkish hue to the scent. But this is an amazing fragrance. If you know the original Rokas Man, you know it's a great, uh, you know, borderline gourmand, patchouli, spices. So I don't know what they've done with the fragrance. This is going to be the 2023 version of it. This is the Intense from Rochas, Rochas Man. And again, from the past, this fragrance was always very well regarded and one of those hidden gem kind of fragrances. And there you go. It's going to be more of a pinkish, you know, purple hue. Mine has gotten a lot darker over the years. It has macerated, if you will, here. It's gotten a lot more concentrated, but here's the bottle. Rojas Men Intense. I don't know what I'm gonna get here, but I'm familiar with the scent, the original Rojas Men um, and the original Intense that I've had for many years. Now, this one here, right off the bat, if you're familiar with Angel Man, it's gonna share similarities with the fragrance, you know, that sugary patchouli with the spices. This is a lot tamer though, a lot more, you know, toned down. It's easier to wear. It's not gonna be very bold or very brash or too spicy or too dark as I thought this was gonna be. It smells good. I don't know if performance is gonna be amazing because I, I do think the scent, a lot of the companies when they mo modernize these fragrances, they try to make them a little bit more fleeting, easier to wear so that doesn't, you know, they won't scare people. It's gonna be a little safer is the word I'm looking for. I think this is a lot safer than what Rokas used to be, the man or the Intense version. So this is like a cross between the two. If you took the Intense and the original, you're gonna get this, but definitely toned down, definitely watered down. I don't think this is gonna be a monster beast kind of fragrance and performance, but it smells nice. I think this is great for nightwear, romantic settings. For those people who have a little bit of a sweet tooth, they'll enjoy this one. And one of the things that really set this fragrance apart from back in the day, was this coffee creamy cappuccino note that it had. And it still has that note here. You do get a little bit of that gourmandy nuance that I'm talking about, along with the citruses up top. It's very inviting. It is delicious. It's this delicious, you know, smelling scent. And again, if you have a sweet tooth, you're gonna enjoy it. Brand new fragrance from the house of Guerlain. This is going to be Platine Privé. This is a little hard to find. I don't foresee you finding this at discounters. I had to get this directly from the Guerlain website. This is L'Omidal Platine Privé. From what I read and from what I understand, this is going to be 
a reinterpretation of the ones that were lighter from, from the EDL collection that have been discontinued. I think the Sport was discontinued, uh, the Cologne was discontinued. So this is like the answer to a lighter, you know, something to wear in the springtime, summertime, day wear, casual settings, dresser situations, but in the, in the warmer uh, times of the year. And again, that's what I heard. I'm gonna take it to the test drive right now and give you guys my full thoughts on it. Love the bottle. And the thing is, when you look at the bottle, you know, Lomidel, Platine Privé, you have the silver and black box with the black appointments here and silver tag. This makes me think of a darker scent, something that I would actually enjoy for the cooler months of the year, which from what I heard, it's completely the opposite. This is more of a summertime scent. And there you go. Nice opening, minty, beautiful grape, gorgeous grapefruit here. There is a bit of a tea note. I'm getting like a green tea kind of a vibe, you know, similar to what I get with, um, I think it's called Wulong Cha from Nishane. It does have resemblances with that fragrance. I don't know what kind of a tea they use here, but more of like a green tea that's a little bit citrus, a little bit creamy as well. There is a faint, a very slight, watery, aquatic note in here that may turn people away, but the, the, the you know, up front and center, what you're gonna get here is going to be that tea note embellished with that beautiful grapefruit up top. So what's giving me this funky smell, I think, is the musk that's used here along with the almond note. They, they utilize the almond note that's very, you know, compelling and very uh, signature, if you will, to the Garlan Ideal Loam Collection. All their fragrances have this watery almond kind of a facet. This one here has more of a watery almond facet along with Neroli. Um, the funky white musk with the almond note is giving me this nutty, aquatic, weird kind of a feel to the fragrance. Perhaps on skin, it's gonna be a completely different experience, but on the blotter here, I'm not really loving it. I like it, I don't love it. But yeah, if you miss the cologne, the spore of this particular line, this could be your answer to those fragrances. I try this on skin first before blind buying. It's not cheap. Um, I foresee this hitting the scanners very soon, but I don't think it's in the scanners right now as I'm filming this. So definitely get a decant, try it before you buy it. And by the way, there is a new, I'm gonna pop it on screen. I could not find it. Couldn't get it from the website because I think it's exclusive to some parts of the world. And I'm talking about the other Guerlain release that came along with this one, which is Habit Rouge Privé. As soon as I can get a bottle, of course, I will share with you right here on the channel. Also a 2023 release. If you have tried this fragrance and you guys are watching this channel, please let me know in the comments. What are your thoughts on that fragrance? Is it worth picking up? Please let me know in the comments. All right, I'm very excited about this fragrance. This is going to be Le Mal Elixir, the newest from Jean-Paul Gaultier. Now this one here, got a ton of limelight, a ton of uh, you know people talking about it, wanting to try it. And even the people that share this online have said that this is the best current Le Mal on the market. We all know that the original is amazing, but it has been reformulated to death, so it's nothing like it used to be. And when you look at the notes for this one, you know, it is just incredible. We're talking the lavender, the mint, the vanilla, that trifecta that the original was known for, along with a honey tobacco and tonka base. So the notes look fantastic. I'm just hoping, against hope, that they translated the notes beautifully into this bottle. Here you go. Gold with black appointments. Beautiful combination here. And again, Lamal sits perfectly on this velvety kind of a podium. They did upgrade the Jigama thing here that you pull, uh, the ring, whatever you want to call it. And the bottle is see-through, you know, with the dark lines, almost like an ambery color is what it is, and you can actually see the juice level. Other than that, it is a gold and amber color bottle. Look like black from the distance, but when you hold the bottle against the light, it's going to be amber and gold. Let's pull this thing here. Let me take this thing for a test drive, because I know I'm dying to try it. Wow, this is interesting. Okay, so this is op this is opening up a little bit boozy. There's no boozy notes over there. You know, there's no when you look at the note breakdown, there's nothing boozy here about the scent. But I think the combination of the, the lavender really amped up the lavender here from the original. The mint is a little bit faint, but I think the lavender with the mint up top will give you this almost boozy-like opening. There's definitely amber here. There's definitely the honey and benzoin vanilla resinous kind of a heart that again, giving me like a boozy drink. It, it smells like a liqueur kind of a scent. I'm really liking it. I don't know if I love it. It's a little bit weird right now off the top here, you know, on the blotter. The development might get better because again, you get the honey, the tobacco and the tonka. This is sweet, not overly sweet. I'm not getting something that's sickly and just syrupy sweet, something that I would not want to, because I don't like those 
sickly, overly sweet kind of scents. The Tonka is here for support, but it's definitely adding sweetness. The honey gives the scent a little bit of an animalic kind of a facet, almost leathery-like. So the way I would describe this off the bat, the tobacco is not very prominent. Perhaps it'll get stronger as the fragrance, you know, gets into the dry down, you know, situation here because it's still in the opening phases of the fragrance. Lavender and mint, definitely more lavender than mint. This is nice. I think on skin, on the warm skin, this is gonna definitely get better. I would not recommend rocking this fragrance right now for the summertime as it gets warmer and warmer. I think this is gonna be one of those clawing scents. However, however, if you're going to be in a you know situation where there's air conditioning, controlled environment situations, uh, cooler nights, I think this is gonna be a great one. Definitely a sensual fragrance, not overly sweet. And again, I have to experience this more on skin to see what kind of developing I'm getting, but so it's getting better. The blotter's getting better now. It's getting smoother. It's getting more of like a suave kind of a scent. Again, this, this is to, to my taste, to my opinion here, on the first impression, I think it's gonna be a phenomenal scent for evening wear, date situations, romantic settings, and of course, fall and winter. The release time for La Mole Elixir, perhaps not the best, not the you know optimal situation here for La Mole to release this right now as we're getting into summertime. But you know, by the time fall gets here, I'm sure this is gonna be available at the scanner so you can actually pick this up at a much better price. But before you do that, you can actually try all the fragrances I've talked to you guys about here on this video, all six of them at perfume.com. Use my code MAX20 from now into the next couple of days, this code is going to be active and then it's gonna go away. So if you wanna try these brand new fragrances and thousands of indie designer, brand new designers and niche, use my code MAX20, details below. Enjoy and of course, Check out fragrancebuy.ca because I know some of these are already in stock and some of these are ready to become available. So if they're available, I'm gonna have it listed below. At any rate, check out fragrancebuy.ca. And when you do, hit the um, new arrivals tab or the rare jams tab so you can find exactly what's coming, what's new, what's hot, and what's not. Let me know in the comments if you tried any of the fragrances I shared with you today, what your thoughts on it, and what other brand new fragrances you guys are looking forward to try. Myself, I can't wait to get a hold of the new Aqua Di Giro Parfum. Thank you so much for your support. If you do enjoy the channel, leave a like, subscribe, show your support, and I will see you guys back here with another video very soon. Take care.